Alrighty, uh, my talk is going to be about uh, Adapted Store Enterprise, uh, which is a huge uh, relational database management product, and I'm going to talk about SQL injections in it. It's kind of uh, unusual because when you talk about SQL injections, you usually think about web apps or desktop applications having SQL injection flows, but in fact, the databases have them as well. So I'm going to give you several examples and uh, discuss how you can protect against this. All right, yeah, let's get started. This is a little bit about me. So I'm doing security research in, at Trustwave in a database security unit. And my daily job is finding database security flaws and writing checks for our products, which scan for these vulnerabilities to help you keep your databases secure, basically. Alrighty, so what is SQL injection? How many of you know what is SQL injection? Okay, almost. It helps us, it's all us. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but not everybody still. All right, so just to give you an idea, here's a quote from, uh, from OWASP Wiki, I think, uh, which gives some idea what it, what it is it. Basically, when you can embed your own SQL statement within another SQL statement, which is going to be executed by application or by some, uh, some server. So at a high level, you can think of SQL injections at applications and also in databases. So I, I'm going to focus on uh, databases. And probably you have heard about, about SQL injections in Oracle database in packages which ship with Oracle, for example. And also you can think about uh, SQL injections in stored procedures, which you can also see with, uh, shipped with SQL Server or with SAP some other databases, right? But uh, besides of that, uh, databases have embedded SQL queries which are executed uh, when you, for example, create an index or create a table. This happens every time you run simple SQL statements against a database. And these things are also uh, susceptible sometimes to SQL injection. That's going to be focus of my talk. So uh, a little bit about SAP Adaptive Server Enterprise. It's a database uh, known for, I think, 30 years now. It's a huge product. It has uh, a lot of components like uh, replication server, extended proc server. Uh, it has uh, Java support, a lot of things in it. And it has versions for almost every platform, like uh, Windows, Linux, Solaris, and Huge, huge, huge code base. Uh, one thing about uh, SQL injection vulnerabilities is that they are universal. They are not bound to any underlying platform. Uh, let's say you found the buffer flow in a database. It has to be, it is actually bound to a platform because you can use the same exploit against Windows database version and, and say Linux. It, you have to recode it. With SQL injections, you have only one piece of code, which is universal. It's going to run on everything, which is pretty bad, right? All right. So uh, I started looking into um, Adaptive Server Enterprise, uh, trying to find some vulnerabilities. And I started by just grabbing over the binary itself. Uh, here's a slide. It just shows you how you can find SQL strings embedded into the application itself, into the database server. So I just go over data server and find strings looking like create index, drop index, or something like drop table. And also I look for, for parameterized queries. Uh, you see this uh, percent sign and an S, which means uh, it's going to be dynamically generated on the fly. So. Uh, I, I highlighted several, uh, several statements like drop index, which have parameters, or drop table. And in fact, there are huge, huge, uh, huge uh, uh, blocks of these uh, strings embedded in the database server. And each of them is uh, possibly a SQL injection vulnerability. Okay. 
If you guys have any questions, just ask. Okay. So moving forward, uh, when, I, when I analyzed some of his uh, uh, possible possible uh, uh, problematic statements, and here is uh, here is a pseudocode from IDEPRO showing you how these uh, statements are actually used within a database uh, uh, server itself. There is a drop index statement in green. And when you see a call to internal SQL, this is a function within the database server which is responsible for running um, internal SQL code within a Z. So the next thing is to verify if we can uh, pass some attacker controlled values to, to this drop index as a parameter. Okay. So let's go over some real-world examples. Uh, this one is uh, SQL injection in DBCC create WC command, which is uh, some of the database consistency checking commands used by administrators uh, to maintain databases. Basically, to exploit this thing, you need to create database privilege. Uh, the point here is do not grant create database unless you really need to, because if you grant it, you're going to end up with a zero uh, granted to malicious users. So how this works? First of all, let's create a login, Joe, and grant him create database within a Z. So we create the login, we create user and grant privilege. This is done as a, say, as a system uh, administrator. Next thing, we're going to connect as a Joe. Okay, and uh, we're going to use uh, display role system stored proc to list uh, roles granted to Joe. By default, uh, Joe has no roles. Next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to attach a debugger to the server process. To do that, I use uh, show server command, which will uh, return me a process ID for the uh, database server, and I'm going to use this process ID as a parameter to GDB. And next thing I'm going to set a breakpoint on an internal SQL command, uh, on a, sorry, an internal SQL function, like shown here. Basically, this will break uh, into a GDB each time uh, internal SQL is executed. Any questions so far? Alrighty, now uh, let's suppose uh, Joe connects to a database server and the first thing he does, he creates a database. Uh, this is a required step because uh, internal uh, logic within a Z will run some SQL against this database. It must exist. That's why we need to create a database privilege for this exploit to work. So once the database is created, Joe will run this uh, uh, statement. And as you can see, he embeds uh, malicious code within a, a second parameter of this DBCC command. What's going to happen is that the server, server will run this uh, uh, set of commands as two commands. Under GDB, we see uh, that we break into, into the debugger and when we examine parameters passed to the internal SQL, we see that the first parameter is create. Uh, first, so I'm sorry. Parameter is uh, composed of two statements. The first statement is create table within the DBCC DB, and the second one is going to be grant role essay role to Joe. This thing will run uh, without any privilege checks because internal code usually runs uh, with the highest possible privileges and without any permission checks. And this thing uh, affects actually other databases like Oracle, like uh, DB2, yeah. So once we continue with the debugger, uh, we see that Joe received a zero. role. 
We see this through SP display role syndication. We run it a second time. And you see this, uh, this works? So legit uh, invocation of this DBCC command would be passing a table name as a, as a third parameter instead of this SQL string which I composed. But unfortunately, uh, SAP fails to validate this parameter and it, it uses this as is. That's giving us uh, sysadmin access. This uh, vulnerability was fixed recently, I think, uh, a month or two ago in these versions of uh, Adaptive Server Enterprise. And as I said, don't grant excessive privileges. Don't grant create a base because this is uh, really dangerous. Okay, uh, let's see another example. Uh, this time we're gonna use a user which has a replication role granted. This is a common scenario for replicated em environments. You have to grant this uh, role to some user which will administer your replication. Again, we, we do this uh, granting replication role, creating new user. And then we're gonna create an <coughs> index, create table, uh, make it replicated and create an index on it. I don't know if you can, if you can see it, but the uh, important step here is that we rename the index so its name is going to be something containing a string we want it to be executed, elevated. So here we rename it to A and then concatenate it with grant role as A role. Once again, we do, we do connect uh, with GDB to the server to see what happens under the hood. And once I run set replicate table, we see this comment uh, drop index and then follow, followed by grant role as say role to Joe. And everything else is ignored because I put uh, two dashes at the end of this comment. Uh, this will result in dropping index and granting role to Joey. Again, uh, no privilege checks here. Yep. Okay, so in what you've shown us so far, if I'm getting it right, please correct me. You're saying there's privilege code that can be executed. It's part of the database code. Yep. And now you're showing me a bunch of ways to get to it. Yep. Okay. Um, other than these vulnerabilities, because there's always going to be vulnerabilities, is there any way to get to that code and to execute that code without escalating to a admin kind of role? Is there a, <coughs> because normally when we look at certain kind of risks, I'm just a little troubled by the thought of having to, you're executing code that has to be there. So therefore the solution's got to be don't let him execute it. You're no. showing me that the, the, the admins could execute it. Okay, scary. Could you possibly show us whether it could be executed by anyone who doesn't step one need to get to admin? Because that would be very, very scary. Like yeah, yeah. An authenticated user. Or, scariest of all, an unauthenticated user. Sure. Just just wondering if those two are possible. Yeah, so these two examples require you to be a little bit elevated. First uh, requires you to have uh, created a base. The second requires you to have a replication role. These are not elements to be fair, right? Okay. These are a little bit elevated. Yeah. But yes, to answer your question, there's going to be a third one, which requires you to be able to only authenticate against the database. I'm going to show you. To authenticate as a user to the database? Yeah, just connect. So shops that say as a best practice, we never let users authenticate to the database, we only let systems. No, 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 that's not true. Uh, the idea is that you have, uh, first of all, it's a multi-step thing. Yeah. You have to patch a database first. 
you have to make sure your application is written the best possible way to avoid, you know, to not allow users run arbitrary SQL through it, right? And then a third thing is to limit privileges as, as, as much as possible. Yeah. Do not grant. Okay. Yeah. Does it answer it? Well, no, I was just, I was just asking, because in each one of these, I'm trying to understand whether or not there is some kind of mitigation. Yeah, or yeah. Or not. And in the last case that you, or abuse case you just started to talk about, you said, now if you just could authenticate into the database as a user. And I asked the question, well, what if, as a best practice, you're not permitting any one user, okay, well, let's say we'll trust our admins, we're not permitting users in general to authenticate into the database. Our best practice is applications connect and the user authentication is handled at the application level. Sort of like forcing a three-tier or n-tier model as opposed to a two-tier. Yeah, that, that would be nice, but uh, consider a desktop application having access to a oh, database. Okay, sure, but so that would be nice. That's a potential mitigation. Yeah, if you okay. can limit it that way, mm -hmm. but I think it's not possible always, right? Uh, uh, certainly not always, sure. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Sure, all right, so Again, uh, we got we got a serial here. Again, uh, there, there are patches. You have to apply them on time. Always try to keep up with the patches, and don't grant extra rolls if you don't need them. And then the last example, uh, which uh, which is kind of old now, but still it shows the idea. Uh, basically, you can get a serial through any database connection. It doesn't require to, you to have any row, doesn't require you to have any permission granted because the only thing you need to be to execute to be able to execute uh, this exploit is to be able to connect to the base because you switch to TempDB, you create a table in it and just create an index. Any user in a Z can do that. So We have just just discussed this, but to recap, this could be exploited from multiple uh, uh, applications. Like, if you have a web application with uh, a flow which allows users to embed comments, basically SQL injection, uh, be sure it could be executed through this application. You, like, uh, attackers could elevate privileges to CS admins, even if your application web application runs as a normal user. So it's important to understand this. It's not only data accessible to your login, it's uh, everything on the server for these types of attacks. And again, if it's a desktop application, it has to store credentials somewhere. And if a malicious user can get access to these credentials, he can connect with, uh, he or she can connect with any client and run any SQL. And again, uh, SQL like this will allow him to let proofs to sysadmin. What uh, could be done here to uh, to prevent these uh, types of attacks? Definitely do not uh, install or enable anything you don't need, like Java, like replication, like uh, some excessive privileges. Do not do that. Never. By default, SAP installs uh, Z with a lot of functionality enabled. I suggest you to go through and disable everything you don't need. Then you should definitely scan for permissions uh, granted to your user accounts. And if you find something suspicious or redundant, just revoke it. Definitely use database monitoring tools or built-in functionality, which uh, is auditing or logging available with uh, Z to see what, what activity is going on in your database and what what comments are executed, uh, what users are created, or something like that. Just keep an eye on that. Definitely apply patches on time. Uh, SAP releases uh, updates for Adaptive Server Enterprise every few months, so watch for security notes from SAP. And here's the list of uh, 
resources in <laughs> case you are interested. Uh, yep. That's all.